up everybody? Today I am super excited to be bringing you guys a very requested video and that is how to record your drums. I partnered with Sweetwater on this project because I get a ton of questions about how to record drums and they get a ton of questions about how to record drums. So we wanted to create a video that shows you how simple it is to record drums and hopefully answers your questions. Now I said for Christmas because it's the holiday season and it might be a good excuse plus there's great deals to get some gear underneath your tree or spoil yourself but in all reality, it doesn't matter when you're watching this video, recording your drums is very simple and I want to show you how. So let's get started and let's talk about the different ways to record your drums. All right, so before I show you some tips and techniques for recording your drums, let me talk about a few of the pieces of gear you're gonna need. Now, in its simplest form, recording your drums can be as easy as one microphone that does everything or it can be as complex as needing an uh, interface with multiple mic cables and mics and really recording it like a true studio does. Now, if you're just gonna use one piece of gear, you can get something like a Zoom uh, F1 recorder, which I'm using right now to record my voice and I also record my drums with. Um, or you can do something a little more complicated if you're gonna record video content, like the Zoom Q2N that comes with a camera and a stereo microphone on it, so it does all the work for you you and produces a well-recorded video of yourself playing with great audio. Now, past the one microphone thing, if you really want to start recording your drums like an actual studio or you want to make a little home studio for yourself, you're going to need an interface, something like the Scarlett 18i20 that I'm going to use today. This is an 8 channel, uh, 8 preamp uh, interface and so what this does is it allows you to hook up 8 microphones to it. Um, I'm also going to show you a way where you can use a smaller version that only has four mic preamps and you can record your drums with just four mics. Or if you want to, you could get a single microphone and a single preamp version of an interface like this and record with just one mic or two mics. But after that, you're just going to need mic cables, stands, mics, and a computer. Now, today I'm going to be showing you Earthworks microphones because in my opinion, these are the best microphones out there for recording drums and I love them and I use them for everything. But if Earthwork microphones aren't in your budget, there are other options out there and Sweetwater has a lot of great options besides Earthworks. But if you want the best and you want your studio to sound like the pros, that's where you gotta go because they are phenomenal. And I'll talk about some of the great things that they help you do behind the drum set as well. So. Let's get started, let's talk about the techniques, and let's actually set up some microphones. To record the drums with a single stereo microphone like the Zoom F1 recorder here, you would want to turn the gain down, which is an option right here. I typically set that to about uh, two or one. Um, depending on how close to the drum set and how loud. And then you want to take the microphone, and most of the time when I use it, I set it a few feet in front of the drum set, maybe up to about five feet, and then aim it down a little bit towards the kick and the snare. Now, recording a drum set with one microphone, like this Zoom mic here, is all about how your room sounds, how the drums sound, how you play the drums. So there are a lot of variables that you can't control, and there's not a lot of stuff that you can do after you record with one microphone in order to make it sound better. You can add a little compression, you can add a little reverb, depending on the space, but the reason that you oftentimes want to record with multiple microphones is to close mic each drum and allow you to go in afterwards and adjust how each drum sounds a little bit. You can add specific compression to the kick. You can add the exact reverb that you want to the snare drum. You can EQ the toms a little bit because there's that little ringy note that comes out of your tom that you can't figure out how to tune out. And so those are the kinds of things that close miking a drum set with multiple microphones can help you do. And so the next step would be to record with four microphones typically. You'll mic the kick, you'll mic the snare drum, and then you'll have a pair of overheads that allow you to pick up your cymbals and your toms. Now, this isn't quite as great as being able to close mic each individual tom, 
but it is a step up from recording with a single microphone because you're able to put some effects on the kick, put some effects on the snare, and a lot of times in your mix the kick drum is the one that you want to hit the hardest, but based on where your microphone is, it might not uh, come through the mix as well with a single mic. So let's check out a four mic setup. When micing a kick drum, you want to get your microphone close to the drum itself so as to eliminate some of the sounds coming from the other drums. That's one of the biggest problems in recording is bleed between microphones and it makes it harder to go back and adjust things after you record. And so with a microphone like this and no hole in the head, you would want to get close to the drum, but you also have to make sure that your drum isn't moving and hitting the microphone during the recording because that can be a big issue. Now, ideally, you would have a hole in your kick and then you're able to actually put the mic inside of it a little bit, which further eliminates bleed and also helps to get a little bit more of the tone and the punch from the drum if you're looking for more of an attacky drum. So check this out. Over on this drum, I do have a hole in the head, so I'm able to get the microphone inside the drum and aim it a little bit towards the beater. And when you aim it towards the beater, you get more of the attack and you get more punch from the drum itself. You also have to watch out for putting it in the wrong spot and allowing air to gush out of the drum when you hit it because air leaves through this hole and causes a whoosh sound on the microphone. So you want to get it in there and you want to make sure that it's aimed at that beater or some guys like to aim it a little bit further out towards the edge of the shell to get more tone and to get more um, depth to the drum. But uh, a lot of times you're really looking for more of that punch and you can get that from getting it right towards that beater. Now for your snare drum, uh, these DM20s from Earthworks have a clip that goes on the snare drum itself, so you don't have to have a stand, but I like to have a stand because I hit the snare drum really hard, and it keeps me from ever having to adjust where the microphone is positioned because it keeps the microphone from experiencing any of the attack and movement that the drum has when you hit it. And so, one of the cool things about these DM20 mics is they have a lot of rear rejection, and what that means is that it doesn't pick up a lot of sound behind this part of the microphone. And so what you want to do when you're positioning a microphone, and you do have to know a little bit about it to really help position it perfectly, but you want to try and block out the sounds that you don't want on your recording. And so for me, I don't want the hi-hat coming through onto this microphone for the snare drum. And so I'm going to work it in here a little bit, and then I'm going to come up underneath the hi-hat and aim it a little bit towards the middle of the drum and down so that this is pointed towards the hi-hat and the rear ejection on this DM20 microphone is going to work in my favor to make sure that I get as little hi-hat as possible. Now, when you're recording your drums, you can fix this. Uh, and help without having a microphone like this if you're getting a lot of bleed by moving the hi-hats further away, raising them up higher, um, which is sometimes why in uh, studio setups you'll see ridiculously high cymbals because they're trying to keep the cymbal sound out of the drum microphones, which allows you to get a better sound overall. So, placement right there, that looks good. That's why we're gonna use the snare mic. I'm gonna put the hi-hats back because the DM20 does a lot of the work for me. All right, so next up is overheads. I'm using the Earthworks SR25 for my overheads and what you wanna do with those. So one thing you want to avoid is a phase issue with your overheads and so you wanna make sure that each of your overheads is exactly the same distance from the middle of the snare drum and that keeps the sound from the drum set from reaching these microphones at different times. So, measure for one, we're looking at 52 and a half there and we're looking at 45 there. So we've got a big difference we have to make up. So our overheads are now the same distance away from the snare drum, which is gonna help you get a much better sound from the kit. All right, so now we have to make sure we check the actual gain of the microphone preamp, which is how high it's turned up. Just like we did with the single microphone, we want to adjust it to make sure that it's picking up the drums and it's not peaking, which means that there's too much volume coming into the preamp and it distorts and changes the sound and it doesn't sound good. So when you hit the drum, you'll look over here and you'll see how high it's coming in, what the volume looks like. Green is good, yellow is getting close to too hot, 
and red means that it's peaking and that you're, you're in trouble. So you want to make sure you stay away from red and you keep it in the green and yellow. All right, so I'm going to hit the kick and I'm going to adjust the mic here until that first bar is in the greenish yellow area when I'm hitting it as hard as I'm going to play it. So check this out. So it's starting to turn yellow and that's where I need to kind of set it because that's as hard as I'm going to hit the kick. Same thing with the snare drum. Now I can come over here to my digital audio workstation and I can click record and I can actually record those four channels that I'm doing here of drums. And so one, two, six, and seven are the ones that I'm doing right now. So I'm going to record enable those. Basically just hitting the R, which allows it to record. You can see I'm getting signal on all those microphones. So now I'm going to hit record and this is actually going to record what I'm playing. So that is a four microphone recording and that would be if you use a smaller four preamp interface or you only have four microphones. All right, so same general idea goes for the tom mics as for the snare drum mic, except I am gonna clip it onto the drums. Uh, but you want to aim the microphone in the direction of the, the drum and you wanna try and cut out the other sounds around it. Over here we do have that crash, so I am going to aim it away from the crash down towards the drum and try and make sure that I'm not getting a lot of bleed from that crash. Lastly is the floor tom. This one is right next to the ride and so I'm going to do all that I can to make sure I'm not getting the ride in it by putting this underneath the ride cymbal and aiming it down towards the drum with the back of the mic pointed towards the cymbal like I talked about before. So that's going to help to eliminate a lot of the bleed. That cymbal is actually going to block a lot of the other cymbals and drums, so it will kind of help to shield this from the other sounds around it as well. So let's plug these mics in and actually record with a seven piece setup. All right, so now all the drums are mic'd up. We have close mics on the toms, we have the kick snare and the two overhead seven microphones on an eight mic preamp interface over here. Uh, but I'm, once I start playing, I'm actually gonna turn on and off the tom mics here so I can show you guys what it sounds like with the close mic toms without in that four microphone setup. And I'm gonna switch to the Zoom F1 recorder in front of the kit and show you what it sounds like once again uh, while I'm playing this without any of these microphones and just the single mic up front. So, let's get started, let's play some drums. All right, so now we've recorded the drums, let me show you a little bit of the post-production process. This may be the thing that's most daunting to you because it seems like there's just so much going on and you have no idea what you're doing. Uh, that was definitely me when I started out and I still don't know everything, but I certainly know a lot more. Uh, but I wanna show you a few quick tips that can help you create better sounding drums when you first record them without knowing pretty much anything at all. And so um, it's a lot more simple than you would think. You just go into your digital audio workstation and you use a few of the built-in presets for compressor, EQ, um, reverb, things like that to help bring a more clear and great sounding uh, recording out of the tracks that you recorded. And so uh, I'm screen capturing my uh, screen here so you can see all that's going on. In this case, I'm using Logic Pro X, which is uh, the most native uh, recording software for the Apple Mac computers because it's made by Apple. Pro Tools is also a big one. Um, 
Logic Pro is only $199, so that is a lot of money, but at the same time, for what it can do, it's excellent. Um, you can use built-in things like GarageBand on a Mac computer, or there are other options out there on the market for less money that have less features and less options. But today we're going to look at Logic Pro. And so uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to play a sample of the track and then I'm going to do a couple of adjustments and I'm going to play the sample of the track again. And I'm going to bounce each of these so you can kind of hear how they actually sound uh, bounced or exported or, you know, sent out of the Digital Audio Workstation. So first off, this is the raw files coming in from the recording interface and um, this is without anything done to it. So because of good preamps in the interface, we use the Scarlett 18i20 from Focusrite and the incredible Earthworks microphones, we start out with a pretty great sounding uh, recording already compared to what you may do your first time uh, sitting down behind a kit. But when you're mixing, you want to try and mix on something that has a flat response in terms of the speakers don't change the way that these tracks sound. and so. Um, you can mix on your laptop speakers, especially if you are going to put this on YouTube and people are going to watch it on a laptop or on an iPhone. But uh, best case scenario, you can invest in uh, some nice headphones like these Audio-Technica um, headphones here. Or if you can get studio monitors, that's the next step up. But I'm not going to assume that you're sitting in a studio like this. So today uh, I'm going to show you some of this stuff on just the MacBook Pro speakers here. All right, so first step that I like to go in and do is I like to actually pan the drums a little bit. And what this does is it instantly clears up the mix because you don't have everything coming right down the middle. And so um, I pan for the camera shot. So if the camera's looking straight at the drum set, things that are on the left-hand side of the kit in the camera shot, I pan to the left. Things that are on the right, you pan to the right. Now, I wouldn't typically pan kick or snare because that can be weird if they're bouncing around in your ears or they're over to one side, but things like overheads and toms I pan all the time. And so I go straight in and I pan my left overhead about 40. You can pan it to whatever you'd like, but uh, then I pan my right overhead exactly opposite. Then I start with my toms. This is my floor tom, so it's furthest to the left, and so I'm going to go yeah, about 40 there as well. Then I'm going to kind of split the distance a little bit and go about 20. And then I like to put my right tom to the right just a little bit so it kind of goes across your ears slightly as I go down the drums. Um, so after you do that, you start to begin to get a little clarity side to side because now the drums are actually kind of moving and the overheads have a little clarity from each other and it's not all coming straight down the middle. All right, so next step that I like to do is uh, I like to go in and add some EQs to these drums. And so um, if you don't know a lot, it's all about trial and error. So you just click on the EQ there, you go up here to drums, and this is the kick drum, so I'm gonna, let's see, I'm looking for punchy kick, that sounds nice. So throw a punchy kick on there. Then snare drum, go into snare drum, I like rock snare drum, that sounds good. Now, I'm skipping this a few steps here and not doing trial and error, you know, because it would take forever to show you the entire process. But, basically you put something on there and you can actually solo it out and listen to it. And then you just want to take note, like, did the EQ make it sound better to you, or did the EQ make it sound worse? Some of these EQs, because they're all presets, will help, some of them won't. Especially with, like, toms, um, if there's a certain frequency that it's boosting, and that frequency doesn't sound good on your drum, it's not going to help the, uh, the toms sound better. And so this is just a simple way to try something. Uh, some of these presets are things that will really help and some of them won't help, but it is trial and error. So at this point, the whole kit. You 
You can hear how the the overhead EQ has brought the the brighter frequencies out a little bit more, the higher frequencies, and so you hear those cymbals, they sound a little bit brighter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The EQ isn't usually a huge difference, but it can be if you use it correctly. All right, and next up, uh, something that can be really powerful is compressor. So compressor helps to get more oomph from what's going on here, and so I like to use built-in compressors in this situation to show you that the compressors in here that are built in for specific reasons can actually be very helpful. So we're going to click, uh, this is the kick drum, so I'm going to do slammed kick because I want something to just hit hard. Um, then we're going to go to the snare and we're going to add uh, snare, rock snare top, that sounds good. Once again, this is all a trial and error kind of thing if you don't know what you're doing. You can go on YouTube, you can go on Sweetwater's page and uh, on YouTube and they have a ton of awesome helpful tips that'll help you learn how to mix and to record and uh, there's a lot that goes into that. And so now we've added compressors. You can hear how things are hitting much, much harder so now we're going to bounce this and share it. But one of the important things about the compressor is that the compressor changes how much uh, gain and volume is coming out of the track. And so if you add compressors, you're definitely going to need to go in and adjust the volume before you do your final product. And so now I'm just looking at what's hitting where on here and you can see it. The toms are really, really hot. The toms coming in here are really, really hot. So I'm going to bring those down in the mix. And at this point, a lot of it is, you know, personal preference. Do you want the overheads hotter? Do you want to hear more cymbals? Do you want to hear less cymbals? I'm going to bring the overheads down a little bit. I'm going to bring the kick and snare down a little bit. You typically want to try and bring volumes down more than you want to raise volumes up. Because if you raise volumes up, you're kind of creating, like, fake digital sound. And that can result in a loss of quality and clarity by creating something that's not real. The amount of sound coming into your preamps that you have here already is where you want to stay and reduce volume if possible because then you're not creating something uh, that isn't already there. All right, so the last thing that you can quickly mess around with is reverb on the tracks themselves. Now, you may or may not like to add that. I sometimes add it, I sometimes don't. It depends on what the room sounds like. If you have a room that when you clap, you hear a lot of echoes, then you probably already have a decent amount of reverb on the recording, especially in the overheads. Uh, but if you have a very dead room because you've hung blankets everywhere, you may end up needing to go back and add some reverb to the tracks themselves. And so, um, I like to come in and uh, for trial and error purposes, you just, uh, let's say the snare drum, we're going to find uh, chroma verb here and you go into the settings and if you look, there's all these different options. So like chambers, there's a drum chamber, there's a drum ambience, there's, you know, a long vocal hall, there's a deep 80s drum set. So you just kind of click on something and try it. We're gonna say deep 80s drum set. That sounds awesome. I'm gonna put that on. Um, you can actually copy and paste it. Hitting sh shift and option. I'm gonna drag that over to the overheads and to the toms. I'm not gonna do it to the kick. I don't really think the kick needs any verb on it. And so now we're gonna hear what it sounds like with the verb. So you can instantly hear a huge difference in what it sounds like with that verb on there and so you may want a little bit of verb you may want a lot of reverb it just depends on personal preference again and trial and error all right so now I am going to bounce a final rendition of the audio here I'm gonna go in and do a little more tweaking for my own personal preferences and I'll share that at the end with the drum set playing and switch once again between 
the four channels, uh, the eight channels, and the single mic in the room. Uh, I really hope this video has helped you. I hope that uh, you now can excitedly go and get recording equipment and uh, record your drums knowing that it is way easier than it may seem. Um, you don't have to be an expert and you certainly don't have to have all the gear in the world. Even just a little bit can help. So uh, click the link in the top of the description for awesome deals on recording gear from Sweetwater. My favorite thing about them is that you get your own personal sales engineer and that person knows what they're talking about and they can answer your questions. So while I hopefully answered questions in this video, if you have a more specific question that I didn't answer and I don't answer in the comments, you can ask a sales engineer and if they know, they'll answer it and if they don't know, there's a million people in that building that do know way better than myself and most likely way better than you if you're just starting out at recording so um, they're great they're super helpful I'll also leave a link in the description there to the Casey Cooper content creator pack and what this is is if you're looking to start recording videos um, this is a pack that comes with everything you need to record not only a GoPro for the video side of things but also uh, the recording interface the microphones the cables the stands um, all of that and what that will help with is it allows you to save a large amount of money, hundreds of dollars, on all the gear at once instead of buying it separately if you do have the budget to go out and pick up something like that. So, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you click the link, check out all the deals, and uh, big shout out to Sweetwater for helping make this happen. I wanted to do this video for a long time, and uh, it's really exciting to finally be able to put it together and have some of the gear to show you guys. So, I hope it helped. And I hope you go record some drums and share something awesome with the world. Thanks so much for watching. Happy drumming and happy recording.